Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to an all-new weekly art challenge review video. I'm your host, BJ Dell, and that's really not true. This isn't a weekly art challenge review video. This is actually a monthly one. Uh, since everybody was kind of sheltering in place and quarantining in the month of April, decided to do a monthly drawing prompt challenge. All 30 days had a different prompt for every day. Posted that online here to YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. And this video is highlighting 30 days of drawings from 30 different artists. Going forward, there is going to be a change to the way that I do the weekly drawing prompt, so stay tuned to the end of the video for that. But for now, let's see what you guys came up with. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump in. We've got a bunch of submissions to cover today, and the first day's prompt was bake for the April challenge. And this one comes to us from Joey W. And Joey took this octopus, turned it into the bake prompt. And I love this one. There's a lot going on. So, you know, with the octopuses having eight arms, there's so many possibilities. And this one, the octopus is doing absolutely everything. Reading the recipe, cooking it, you know, getting everything ready for the oven. I think this one is super, super cool. There's a a lot of motion a lot of you know kind of dynamic range that's going on with this and there's a lot to look at and I think that's really one thing that makes a successful illustration is just you know drawing the viewer in I think Joey did a fantastic job at that so great job Joey uh, next one up day two was zoo and this one's from Christine and I've uh, showed Christine's work before on the channel and Christine is just a phenomenal artist just everything is just so so good uh, and this one is no exception to that got the the gorilla here behind the cage and I love this chain link number one if we look at it so I think a lot of artists would have just you know kind of went and drawn lines diagonally across the screen one way and then across the other way but Christine really made this believable you know wrapped each piece of this around each other and then as we pull in here you can see added this little white part here so when you pull out and look at it it has that nice shine to it it looks super realistic just like all of Christine's artwork and just a fantastic job uh, Christine's got this really cool kind of scratchboard technique that we've talked about in episodes before and Christine actually started her own YouTube channel channel now too I've talked about that in a previous episode so definitely if you guys want to learn more about art and she's got some great tutorials over there check her out I will link uh, her show and her channel in the description below but just a really cool take on the word Christine so thanks so much for showing that off and before I get too far too I kind of went through every single person's entry a lot of these came through on Facebook and if it did come through on Facebook I also went through on Instagram and tried to find it on there so I've got everybody's Instagram handle on here too. I think there was just a couple that I couldn't find. So if you guys are on Instagram, I apologize if I didn't include you here, but you'll see that at the bottom here. Christine's not, so uh, walkingnature.com is her website. She's got a bunch of different products featuring her artwork on there. So if you like Christine's work and want to get a shirt, she's got a bunch of stuff on there. So be sure to check out that at the bottom of each one of these too. So next up, we've got Steve. Uh, day three was tropical. Steve's got this school of fish which i just love so so many things about this work of course colors pop steve's work is just fantastic uh constantly posting in the group and just really really great quality of work uh so the background here love the colors the way that this gradient kind of flows from this kind of bluish green down here to this lime green i think that's a really nice fade uh and then the school of fish just really well drawn i've talked about before in uh, these videos in the Let's Draw series and some other places on YouTube. Um, talked about if you're doing a design with more than one character, really try to give each character its own feel, its own personality. Uh, so when you look at it, it just doesn't look like the same character over and over again. And I know Steve uh, really is superb at this throws a lot of different characters onto one illustration and they all have you know their different personalities and their different feels uh, and this one really illustrates that too so even though we've got the four fish you know eyes are a little bit different between them mouths are a little bit different and just the uh, you know the directions of the the way they're looking you know just everything makes these feel like they are separate characters and i think that's fantastic and just the color of the fish too just makes everything really pop it's got that just fun tropical feel and just a great entry so thanks for sharing that one steve a uh, day four was patterned and sarah k uh, submitted this one i think this one works really well love the colors so let's just start out with kind of the background so we've got this kind of off-white cream color background uh going in to this kind of 
teal blue, uh, you know, different values of that into then this mauve pink color. And I think it works really well. It kind of separates out each piece since the colors are so different and it really reads, you know, quite clear. You can kind of differentiate between, you know, these pieces here, these pieces here, and then the background. And I think that is awesome. I think this would make a fantastic pattern for, uh, you know, a, a book cover or, you know, sheets or, uh, bedspreads, uh, stuff like that. One thing here I would kind of recommend, and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. So I haven't done any videos on this talking about repeating patterns, but technically this one's not a repeating pattern and it wouldn't work for those things I described just because as you start to repeat this, I'm going to pull this over and you can kind of see where these line up. It's not exact. So these are kind of scrunched together. You can see that we're losing this overall shape right here. It's kind of too close. Likewise, if we do it one more time here and bring it down to the bottom, let me delete these now. Duplicate this one and bring it down to the bottom. Same thing here, these don't match up here either. So for a repeating pattern, really, uh, you want to make it match up from the top to the bottom and the left to the right. So no matter where you place that uh, design over and over again, it's going to line up every single way. So there's definitely a lot of good tutorials uh, on YouTube. Uh, I know Skillshare has a bunch too that you can check out talking about repeating patterns. Pattern itself, I, like I said, I love just, it would have been really cool to see it, you know, being the full repeating pattern, but just a great job. So thanks for sharing that one, Sarah. Next one up, day five, Medieval and Clyde has got this super cute mouse guy riding a cat with a Ritz cracker for a shield, a uh, Q-tip here kind of as his weapon. And I think this one is super, super cute. Uh, love kind of the layout of it. You got the, the scenery here in the background. And then of course the two characters here in the foreground. I think those work really well. A couple things here uh, that I would talk about kind of change maybe a little bit is I've talked about in these uh, weekly art challenge videos before uh, if you're you know drawing a, a single illustration it really speaks to you know the talent and what you're able to accomplish with that if you can tell kind of a story and you can have something going on in just one frame of course that's easier to do if you have you know a sequential art piece so you've got multiple frames kind of like a comic strip doing it with one is a little bit difficult uh, so with this one, I, I think you could accomplish that in a couple different ways. So I love the character design. I love kind of the expression on the uh, the mouse's face here. But looking at the the mouse, I'm not sure why his expression looks this way. So is it because, you know, he's riding a cat? Obviously, he's got a saddle and everything else. So I would assume that the mouse is pretty comfortable riding the cat. I don't think he's really scared of it because of, you know, just the way he's dressed and kind of outfitting it like the way it is. Uh, so I think there's a couple things different that you could do with this. The cat's kind of peering down here over top of this cliff side. So you've got the cat's kind of vision going off this way the mouse is kind of looking here more towards the back and more towards the viewer so those don't really line up I would say here you know you could have the mouse also looking down here off the side and then you could maybe even pull the entire thing back here and you could have you know maybe a bunch of spears down here and just like some swords coming up to where you've got the impression that there's an army down here he's outnumbered and that would kind of I guess uh, use the expression a little bit more um, in, in the correct sense and you understand what's going on with the expression. Uh, likewise here, if you want to keep it kind of looking this direction and the same expression, you could always too have kind of more motion to the cat. Like, you know, they were maybe being chased by an army and the cats coming up here didn't realize it's the edge of the cliff and the cats kind of screeching to a halt of course this would change the entire shape of the cat and you would have to you know kind of have the paws outstretched and maybe the the bottom hind legs here kind of trying to stop here in the dirt and you know having some some action lines there but i think that would just be a little bit better uh you know way to tell a story completely with this because you've got a really good start to a story uh but taking that one step further would be really cool to see but just a great job clyde and clyde killed it did i think every single day so kudos to you really really awesome to see all your work this month uh next up day six is galaxy and mike c's got this pretty awesome astronaut with the skull here and i really like these kind of swooshy pink banners here. Uh, 
I think that kind of adds a little bit more to it. And I think it's cool too, just the way that they're kind of opaque here that you can see some of the lines through. I think that works out really well. Love the, you know, the, the skull and the skeleton underneath. I think that's super cool. And you kind of nailed the, the galaxy part without, you know, going too crazy with it and taking away from the overall picture. So I think that's great. Uh, a couple of things here. I probably would have played around with the hands a little bit more. I know some people have, you know, problems doing hands. And of course, with cartoons and illustrations, you have a little bit more leeway as far as, um, you know, proportions and perspectives and stuff like that goes because you don't have to stick to total realism. Uh, but with here, we've got the, let me switch to a blue. So with here, we've got kind of the pinky finger as big as the thumb. Of course, the pinkies in the foreground, thumbs in the background. So, you know, it's going to be a little bit different size wise, but this being here that big, I think it's a little bit too large. So shrinking that down just a little bit probably would have been a little bit better here, pulling the thumb around and then here, maybe splitting these up just a tad, not even drawing them completely in. Cause I kind of just like that the way that you've got it here, just the, the, uh, I guess, impression that the entire hand's there. But I just think right now it looks a little bit muddied and it's just a little bit too big. Same thing with this one here. It almost has like a mitten feel to it and it doesn't really have as much definition as this one up here. But overall, a really cool job and loved seeing that one this week. So thanks so much for that one, Mike. Next up, we've got Omar Day 7 Breakfast and we've got Frankenberry, one of the best cereals ever. And I think this one is just super good. Composition-wise, Super great. We got the, the head off to the side, kind of framed here by the, the circle, maybe moon shape with the castle in the background, once again, off to the side. So everything's not perfectly centered. And I love uh, also just the, the use of colors is fantastic. So I had somebody uh, the other day in the comment section ask me, uh, you know, if I could do a video about colors, how many colors should you use in a design? And talk more about that, which I've talked a little bit about color theory before using complementary colors, using the color wheel to your advantage. Uh, so I might go into a little bit more detail with that later. Honestly, as far as the number of colors, it's going to depend on your design, what you're drawing. I mean, there's no limit to the number of colors you can use. Uh, of course, when you get into graphic design stuff, you know, you don't want to use as many. And I think this is really cool because basically this is just kind of different values and different hues of the same base color. We've got this kind of magenta pink of Frankenberry. And I think this works so well just because it's basically the same color, you know, just using different values throughout and it makes this really pop. If you picture this background as black, I don't think it would look as good. Uh, same thing here. If you kept the background black and put the castle as, or kept the background magenta, put the castles black, I don't think that would look as good. I just think it's really cool how just that, you know, one color does all the work. So just a really great job, Omar. So thanks so much for sharing that one. Day eight is Rachel, Mama Doodle nine on Instagram. And um, this one was dream. So I wasn't sure which way people were going to go with this. A lot of people, you know, kind of went with nightmare stuff or, uh, you know, dreams that they were having. And I think this one is good. Uh, a lot of the stuff on Mama Doodle Nine's Instagram uh, kind of uses these little girls, and I think it's great. I think the dream in this, you know, kind of believing that you can be whatever you want to be with the superhero cape and the soccer ball, it's just really, really cool. Definitely a, a positive message for young girls, and I think it's super awesome. Love the character design. Uh, just a really cute design overall, uh, but then the way, you know, everything's done here without super hard uh, black outlines and using the colors more to do the work, I think is really, really cool and just an overall fun piece with a good message. So thanks so much, Rachel, for sharing that one. Definitely check her out on Instagram. Next one up is I'm going to go with OEM. Hopefully I pronounced that one right. Day nine fur. Uh, and this one is from Instagram. I think this one's really, really awesome. So uh, of course we got the cat representing the word fur and then the collar here tying into the prompt of fur as well. So works well with the uh, daily prompts. But I think the thing here and what you can kind of pull from this is just using some illustration uh, kind of tricks and the way that your eyes work when it's looking, when they're looking at a piece to your advantage so of course we've got the the main focus of the illustration being the the girl here in the center with a cat on the head but these lamp posts the way that they are made then you know kind of draws in your eye so you've got kind of this line of sight here with the bottoms of the lamp posts you've got the tops of the lamp posts coming in this way 
and you see it just draws your line of sight directly into that center subject of the illustration. I think that's just a brilliant, brilliant idea and use of those lampposts works really well. And colors overall too, really nice. I love the uh, kind of gradient change from the dark black sky up here, kind of falling down into this more purplish gray here. Same thing with the ground going from that yellow up to the white with the gradient just looks really cool. So fantastic job there. Day 10, Insect. And this one is not a drawing. I know this was draw in place, but as I always say with the weekly art challenges, uh, does not have to be, you know, hand drawn. It doesn't have to be digital. It doesn't have to be traditional. I've uh, featured some sculptures and stuff before. It's all about making something and creating it. So uh, this one comes to us from Carol. And I thought this one was just super, super cool. I had to put this in here because I knew I was going to forget what it's called. It's called paper quilling. And I thought this one was just an awesome, awesome take on the word insect and something out of the ordinary. You don't usually see in the group. So that's why I wanted to highlight this and just kind of zooming in. We can see this here. And this is just absolutely awesome. Just really, really cool. Love the buildup of the bee and everything going around here. Just a fantastic uh, take on the word. And just, like I said, something creative and something out of the ordinary from stuff that we normally see. So just beautiful work. I love the, the detail and the intricacies and everything. And setting art apart uh, is the name on Instagram if you want to check out Carol over there. So great job, Carol. Next up, we've got Fern. And this one is from Anastasia. Uh, this one, really, really cool. I like kind of the texture and the buildup of this almost dirty grunge uh, pattern uh, brush here. I think this is really well done. As far as the, the fern itself and the piece, I'm, I've talked about before, I'm not a super huge fan of the symmetry tool on Procreate. There's some, some cool stuff that you can do with it, but using it and overusing it too much, uh, I think things start to look a little too static. Uh, with this, I think it actually works for the ferns itself. I think it's really cool uh, the way that those are you know, symmetrical, and I, I don't think it takes away from the design, especially since you went back and you know, colored them in separate. They actually have their own values to them, so I think that works. One thing I would probably recommend not doing is using the symmetry when you get down to to the pot because I know a lot of times when you start doing kind of the curves and the circles with the symmetry when you start meeting them up things get a little wonky you know it's fine if you're over here on the side but once you start using that center line to use that symmetry is when you kind of get into problems and I think here you can kind of see so we've got kind of the curve here of the bottom of the pot and then the top kind of comes down almost like an angle here and then back up uh, which looks a little wonky. So, you know, just pulling this up separately like this, bringing that top out. And then same thing here. We see this backside of the pot kind of going in when it should like curve up and around like this. So I, I definitely say, you know, try the symmetry tool, but don't rely on it too much completely for the entire design because you can see you can start running into problems with stuff like this. But overall, I think the design works. I think it's a really strong design. It has a, a very just kind of soothing, nice, natural look to it. So just a really good job, Anastasia. So thanks for sharing that one. Uh, next up, we've got day 12 is Aquatic. And this one was from Ricardo. And Ricardo, I think, pretty much took uh, every single day and ran with it. I know combined like a couple of words uh, into one, but I think every single one had this kind of caricature cartoon version of, I'm assuming it's a, a self-portrait of Ricardo. And I thought this one was cool. Like we talked about here earlier with the uh, medieval one from Clyde talking about kind of telling a story in one illustration, one, uh, frame of artwork. I think Ricardo did a great job with this Of course. You know, we got the word bubble here, but not even a word, just, uh, an exclamation mark here. And you know, the, the, Diver here kind of swimming away from the shark's open mouth looks really cool. Of course, this one, if, uh, as well as a traditional piece. So like I said, does not have to be digital. It can be traditional as well. And Ricardo did that really, really well. And I enjoyed seeing just kind of this little guy in every single day's uh, illustration prompts for the month. So really cool, Ricardo. Thanks so much for sharing that one. Uh, next one up is, uh, how do you say this one? Katerzak? Katerzak? Okay, let's go with that. Uh, Katerzak on Instagram. And this one is day 13 vintage. And went with kind of this 
almost uh, like war propaganda vintage poster. And I think this one is really cool. So back to the talking about the colors with the Frankenberry one. This one kind of falls in place with that too. So you can achieve a lot of different things with colors. With this one, you can see just with a simple color palette of, you know, one, two, three colors. It really kind of brings you back to the like I said, the war propaganda posters, it really brings that to mind. So that's a, a good example of why I chose this one is just because just with a, a simple three color color palette, you can really kind of relay what you're wanting to, to say with a piece before you actually even start drawing anything. Uh, I think just seeing these colors together really brings that home. And I think it's a, a really strong piece. I love the uh, the choice of the fonts and the laying out where everything's at. And my hand keeps on hitting this and moving this. That's one thing I've seen uh, since I got the uh, iPad Pro 2020 Gen 4 model. Uh, and I talked about this with uh, one of my other friends. Shout out to Jason uh, about this. He said that he thought this was a lot more touchy as well. Is that are you having problems like with your hand hitting it and zooming and moving stuff around? And I am. Uh, so, yeah, let me know in the comments if you guys have one of the new ones and are having that problem. I didn't have that problem with the uh, the Gen 1 Pros. And I know there's some options, you know, as far as turning stuff off and the finger touch. And I don't mess with any of that stuff because I still do use the finger touch for doing uh, shapes and, and so on and so forth. But anyways, I uh, just wanted to point that out because I know it keeps <laughs> jumping. So uh, thanks so much for sharing that one. Day 14, Zodiac. And this one is from Jose. Uh, this one, Aries, the Ram. And I think this one's fantastic. So, so far we've got pretty much every single piece has got colors in it. Uh, Jose's is the first one that's just black and white. This just shows you, uh, you know, what's capable with inking and going in and laying down heavier inks in certain areas. So looking at the Ram horns here, this bottom side, we've got this pretty heavily shadowed by, you know, thicker lines here that connect. Same thing on this side. Stippling here inside the nose really builds up the shadows in there. So uh, just looking at this, you can see there's a lot of possibilities with just using, you know, basic uh, black pen or black marker, or in this case, you know, black brush digitally. There's a lot of stuff that, that you can do with that. You don't always have to rely on colors. And I think Jose did a fantastic job showing that this uh, time around. So thanks so much, Jose. Uh, next one up, halfway through almost day 15, yeah, 30 days. So day 15 is Drip from Rhonda. And I showed Rhonda's work before. She's part of the group, and she does a lot of uh, traditional acrylics on a canvas board, and that's one of these. I think this one's really great. I love the, the ice cream here. You can see just using the different values, building up shadows, white for the highlights, just really gives this a lot of dimension. It really makes it feel three-dimensional and starts to kind of have that more kind of photorealistic quality to it, which I think is really well done. I love the, the colors here, too, this kind of teal blue green against the pink and the brown just really makes the main image pop and that kind of brings your eye in so just a fantastic piece if you guys uh have tuned into previous uh episodes before Rhonda was the one that did a lot of the the pig stuff and the spaceships and uh stuff like that so definitely check her out some really cool traditional work Day 16, Graffiti, and this one's from Dale. Uh, big fan of Dale's work, too. He's been posting a lot of stuff in the group. Got a killer Instagram as well, so check him out. Uh, and this one, of course, a traditional piece. Dale shows off a lot of digital stuff, but one traditional with this one. And I think it absolutely is perfect for Graffiti. I mean, the, the overall look of this just screams, you know, something that you would see. Uh, painted on a wall with a spray paint can, even having the spray paint can as part of the design for this. Uh, and graffiti is one of those things. It really has kind of a, a stylized, stylized or a stylistic look to it that, that you see and you associate with that type of artwork. And I think Dale did a fantastic job with this. Just the overall really kind of blown out uh, proportions and cartooniness to this. You got a kind of squared head here with some really fun uh, characteristics of the lips and the ears and the nose that comes around the, the big goofy look on the the mouth here kind of biting into the finger just overall really cool great character design 
uh, great line work with it and just a really fun piece. So thanks so much for sharing that one this week, Dale. Uh, day 17, I didn't even put 17 in here. What am I doing? Day 17 was Reptile. I uh, had to pull that one out real quick. And this one is from Darren. And this one, a really kind of painterly digital piece. I think this one's really, really cool. Love the colors that are used in here. Like I said, has that painterly look to it. Just a great use as we dive in a little bit closer. Great use of like shadows and highlights here using that white really, really brings out kind of the texture of the scales here. And I love this kind of rolling brush technique too, to frame this all around this kind of messiness here as it comes down to the water and fades down in. I think this one just reads really, really uh, well and just a cool, cool piece. So thanks so much for sharing that one, uh, Darren. Next up is Mascot and this one's from Brian. The Dirt Eaters got this worm coming out of the, uh, the ground here, love the cross baseball bats and then the, the baseball here in the back too. I think this one really reads mascot, something that you would see on, you know, the back of a, a local, you know, team's jersey. Uh, and I think it's just a, a cute design, cute uh, overall character here. I think it's really neat. The, uh, the shine here works really well with the different white spots that are all around. And I think it, like I said, just reads mascot and does its job. Uh, the overall look of the font chosen too, I think that works well. I think a lot of people have a problem uh, with choosing correct fonts for, for stuff like this. With fonts, I mean, there's so many different options out there. And I know a lot of people want to combine multiple fonts into one thing or they'll use something that just doesn't make sense. Uh, case in point, if anybody's watched, I, I had a lot of people lately talking about the Outer Banks on Netflix. And I don't know if you've watched it or not. I had people recommend it on uh, Facebook and I watched it. I, I didn't like it personally. If you liked it, cool. Uh, I didn't think it was all that great. But Outer Banks is a, a perfect example. If you guys haven't watched it, um, it won't totally make sense, but the font used for the Outer Banks title screen and, you know, for the show logo just does not make sense. It almost had the, the same look as kind of Ready Player One, that futuristic, just kind of almost like space look to it. And the Outer Banks is a TV show about like these kids uh, down in the Carolinas looking for treasure out at sea. It has nothing to do with science fiction, sci-fi, nothing. I, I have no clue, uh, you know, why they went with that, but uh, just a, an example of why it's so important to choose the correct font for your work. And that's an example of where I think somebody messed up, but I think Brian did a fantastic job with this one. So thanks so much for that one, Brian. Uh, day 19 is Jamas. Jamas was another one that absolutely killed it. I think did every single uh, prompt for the whole 30 days. So loved seeing his stuff. And this one we've got, uh, I think maybe traditional, maybe it's uh, a digital. I can't remember if he put in here. It could go either way, um, but it looks has that traditional look to it. Uh, but the sleeping dragon with this city and these castles just kind of built on its back. Love the kind of extra step here, having the, the mountains come up here to the side and having these kind of rope bridges attaching everything here uh, to the side. Just really cool. Like it being that just, once again, black uh line work kind of like Jose did with the Zodiac piece. But then uh, Jamas went, you know, a little step further and threw in some of the, the grayscale shading here, which I think works. And then just really sparingly threw in some green for the shrubbery and grass around here, which I think is a really cool uh, technique that he used. Didn't use it too much. It was used sparingly, and I think it succeeds really, really well. On um, this one, kind of like I was talking before with telling the story with the, the shark one and then the mouse on the cat one, uh, this one tells a story. I want to know more about this. So we've got this sleeping dragon. How long has he been asleep to have an entire city built on his back? Uh, did the people that built the city know that they were building it on a sleeping dragon? Uh, did they ever make it down here to the bottom or did they stay up here to the top? You know, are they aware? How long has he been asleep? When's he going to wake up? There's so much more to the story. And I think that's one of the things that makes a really successful design. So just awesome job, Jamas. So thanks so much for that one. 
Uh, next up, day 20, sci-fi for Mark. And Mark's taking part in a lot of these art challenges before he's got his two characters here, Munch and Pistachio, I believe. Uh, definitely check out Mark on Instagram, M. Wilson Illustration. If you want to see more from these guys, it's kind of an ongoing thing uh, to throw these two characters that he created in a lot of different harrowing uh, situations. And this one's cool because, of course, we're with a sci-fi term, meaning Calvin here as the spaceman. And I'm a huge Bill Watterson fan, so seeing you know Calvin and anything is gonna uh, get my interest peaked. And I just thought he was always just an awesome artist. Uh, and I see a lot of his um, work as far as inspiration in one of my other favorite artists, Scotty Young, who does uh, Marvel comics. If you guys don't know either of those two, if you don't know Bill Watterson, shame on you. But if you don't know Scotty Young, check him out. Uh, but anyways, Mark's just really cool here. I love kind of incorporating his own characters into uh you know a scene from calvin and Hobbes, i think that is really fun so uh just a really cool piece all together check out more from mark if you want to see more of his guys uh day 21 beast from carrie bad squirrel art this one i i don't want to play favorites and i don't want to say oh you know uh this is my favorite but honestly out of all the submissions for the uh the month of april this one struck me and I, it was the one I kind of came back to. So if I had to pick one, I would say this one is my favorite from the month. I just think this one has so much going for it. I love the design. I love the characters. Uh, the the dragon here in the bathtub, just so well done. The the kind of using the gray scales here to color everything in. So we went really dark up here with the hair, and you know had a little bit lighter gray down here. I just think everything works really well. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the Carrier Bat Squirrel art, I did, let's see, what was it? The question and answer video. If you guys watched that one, and I took the 3D model uh, that was done in, I think it was, was a blender, uh, and colored that in. That was from Carrie. That was from Bat Squirrel art. So just really, really strong uh, knowledge and execution of character design just stuff blows me away just really fantastic i know carrie posted the other day one of the uh the drawings for mermaid which is one of the prompt lists going on right now and once again just fantastic such a talented artist so uh, definitely hop on over to bad squirrel art and follow carrie over there but like i said this one just so good i love the the little boy here just this look on his face is just so good. Uh, so is this kind of annoyance or is it the the more like focused look of determination to really get this guy clean or is it maybe a little bit of both? I just love that. That look, you know, is kind of uh, juxtaposed against this carefree look of the, the dragon. It's just so awesome and just really, really great. So thanks so much for sharing that one, Carrie. Uh, day 22, Sugar Skull by Scotty, and this one's really cool. Uh, definitely a traditional Sugar Skull. I know somebody posted that they thought that was just a weird combination of two words. Didn't realize uh, Sugar Skull was actually a thing. So uh, I, I know maybe this list was somewhat of a, a learning uh, thing for some people too. So that was kind of funny to, to hear, but I think Scotty did a really good job of this. Uh, color wise thing really pops off the paper here. And I think the thing as I was looking at that made me, uh, kind of giggle and, and like this one is zoom in here and Scotty's actually got his name straight down the cross in the center here. It kind of just looks like part of the design. So I like that, you know, it wasn't signed down here and, and actually incorporated the signature signature into part of the design i think that that was really really fun so great job scatty on that one uh next up day 23 is nurse and this one is by dirk uh, dd.digi on instagram and you got this nurse sitting here love the overall look of the character i think the the face is really cute love the hair uh, one thing I've talked about before, too, with doing shadows and highlights, and I've especially you know talked about with shadows, is don't go too dark with shadows. And I think this was uh, an example where going too dark kind of hurts the design. Uh, so we've got this really, really heavy, heavy shadow here. And... You know, sometimes going dark with a shadow like this might be okay in work if you've got a strong backlight against kind of an ominous, huge character. So let's say, uh, you know, you've got somebody being mugged in an alley and you've got a street lamp 
you know, behind the mugger. The mugger's just this huge, burly kind of, um, you know, mobster look to him. And then you've got a smaller character that's getting ready to be mugged. Uh, you know, using a shadow like this in that case, uh, I think would work. But here it's just, like I said, just a little bit too much, a little bit too dark. So definitely try to lighten that up a little bit, not make it look kind of as ominous. Uh, also here too, the, the pose uh, sitting here on the ground, looks just a little bit off kind of makes me like hurt <laughs> just looking at it maybe it's because i'm not as limber as i once was but uh the pose looks a little bit unnatural one thing i would do even if you didn't change the pose overall is when you start drawing in the thighs here and where they come down to the knee and you break it off completely and then draw the, the bottom of the leg with the calf here with a solid line. That's one thing that kind of breaks it up a little bit too much and makes it look a little bit less natural. So here I'll show you on this side. If we undo this, right? And then for that thigh as it comes down to the knee, if we just kind of taper this line down like that. So it's not actually connecting all the way and it kind of feels more like that leg is kind of folding and bending over behind. You can kind of see it there. I think that looks, makes it look a little bit more natural and not as stiff. Uh, like I said, the, the overall pose is a little bit stiff and not necessarily how I would see maybe uh, a nurse sitting. But if we do the same thing over here, it's just going to be a little bit different kind of trying to make this work because there's so many different values of the color right there. But same thing here, just kind of pulling that down to where it doesn't actually connect. It looks a little bit more natural, uh, not as hard line, but overall, like I said, really cute design. I like, like the face. Same thing here for this drop shadow too. Uh, drop shadow really is not going to work like this against an actual character. So if we look at it to have a drop shadow for the head directly behind the head, means pretty much that she's going to have to be sitting against a wall. So let me do that again on a different layer. And we'll erase this overlap. So for her to be sitting like that with the drop shadow against behind there, it's going to have to be her sitting behind the wall. But then once that happens, then the shadow here from the feet is going to change because for the shadow for the wall there, the light source would have to come in from here. And as it comes in from here, though, we're kind of having this light source come in here for the legs. So as you can see, it's really going to affect things differently. I would probably, if you did a drop shadow, have it more fall, you know, back this way instead of directly behind her, just because since the head and the feet here um, are set like they are, it's really not going to have the drop shadow uh, fall like that. So that's another thing that makes the pose itself look a little bit off, but uh, maybe use some of those tips and put them into action. So thanks so much for sharing that one. All right, let's go ahead and jump back into it. Sorry, I had to uh, pause there for a second, get some batteries for the recorder and a drink of water. But day 24 is inside, and this one is by Linder. Uh, this cute kind of coin-operated uh, prize machine with the capsules here, just super, super cool. Once again, back to talking about color palettes and color choices. I think Linder did a great job here choosing this kind of muted uh, kind of pastel uh, color palette works really well for the the design and for the overall feel of the illustration love the line work too so we got this blue around the outside of the machine and then also using the same blue around the capsule here ties everything together really well uh, and let's talk about the line work itself so kind of got this shaky uh, line work here around the sides changes in the overall line weight throughout but like i said with the shakiness and it not being perfect i think works really really well gives kind of a dynamic energy to the line work uh, makes it not too perfect and it just makes it more fun same thing over here to adding in these little motion lines over here to simulate you know kind of the the feel of that top popping off the capsule i think that's a great choice and then seeing the the little cute prize inside was really fun as well so i can see this working as kind of like a, a sticker it will work for that or even as an enamel pin i think it has that feel to it as well so just a really cool interesting take on the uh the word inside really cool prompt uh kind of use there so day 25 is architecture and this one is by Nestor. got this cute house here kind of floating in space love the colors for this of course the the background kind of blends in a little bit to the greens but i think the red here and the magenta of the roof 
really kind of makes it pop and stand out. So once again, back to colors, really cool choices there. I think it's really kind of a quaint, cute look to it. Kind of has that Animal Crossing or, uh, you know, that game feel that, that kind of gives you that, that cute nostalgia. So just a really, really good job there. A couple things to talk about as far as the building itself goes and architecture. And I know I haven't talked uh, a lot and haven't done a video on, you know, drawing buildings and, and three-point perspective and stuff like that. But uh, one thing to keep in mind when you're drawing buildings is definitely the the way that everything comes back and the perspective that you're using and the angles and the planes uh, here it's kind of apparent with the awning if we check these out on the uh, top of the windows the way that the roof comes back here and then the bottom of the foundation comes back you know it comes back on that same plane and you've got kind of a different plane going on with the awnings here so you'll see this one kind of comes up above where it should this one comes down below so definitely pay attention to those uh lines as you're drawing in that perspective uh also with the the way that this comes back here you want to make sure that you watch the line work if you start out with something like this that looks kind of draftsman-esque and mechanical definitely keep that same line work throughout when you're drawing buildings if it's something that's you know a little bit more sketchy and a little bit more fun uh something thinking about going back here to lenders like i said with that kind of more dynamic uh, outline here. If you're doing something like that, you don't have to be as careful, but when you start out here and then you have, you know, lines like this that are kind of shaky, it definitely looks weird going against these perfect lines here. So I would definitely recommend sticking with one or the other. Uh, same thing here when we go off to the side and we've got this curve coming around here. We've kind of got a line weight that's consistent throughout until it gets here and you can see there's a gap here. So instead of this coming down and following this, like I said, in that mechanical sense, this is wider back here. Uh, so definitely paying attention to that and choosing when one or the other, uh, which way to go. Same thing here. You can see the line weight kind of dips here uh, towards the end and tapers off when everything else kind of has this really mechanical steady line weight. So definitely pay attention to that as you go forward, but a really cute piece. Appreciate you sharing that one this week or this month. Nestor. Uh, next up, day 26, Desert, and this one is from Steve, who goes by Politic Inc. on Instagram, so definitely check out his page. Uh, this one, this cactus, really, really cool. Love the the colors used in this one once again, and then also the, the shadows here just really builds up that sense of three-dimensional quality with these pieces of the cactus that comes up and around just really has that kind of 3d feel to it which works really well with this and the same thing bringing that down into the flowers down here and then the leaves i think it just works really well love the the color use up here and kind of the gradient going from that pink to the orange to the yellow here at the bottom and it just has a really cohesive feel to it it's framed really nice with the the oval here and then also the flowers down at the bottom and love on the sides you know kind of how the cactus pokes out of that frame it's not held inside that frame so really really cool piece steve so thanks so much for sharing that one uh next one up day 27 stencil tobias uh tobias was another one that i think did every single day and kind of like uh some of the other ones i talked about using multiple or the same characters over and over again tobias used this devil girl in uh, almost every single day so i think that was an awesome choice uh you know it's it's hard to decide and feel for what you're going to do with these prompts and get an idea. It makes it even harder when you try to take the same character and use it and fit it into the prompt. Uh, so uh, hats off to you, Tobias. Really cool job that you took the extra step with that. And of course, this one kind of has that Banksy-esque feel to it. Uh, has the graffiti against the wall uh, and using the heart as the the balloon here if you guys have seen the the little girl with the red balloon that Banksy has done definitely a, a shout out to that so I think that's a really cool idea let me grab a, uh, another drink of water here but like I said really cool to see all of the uh, the same designs or the same girl used in every single piece so just a really really cool uh, attempt at that so thanks so much for that one this month tobias uh next one up is feather and this one is by rogue captain rogue on instagram and if we kick back here uh talking about 
feathers. Let's go to Jose's again, which I know because a lot of people did, of course, feathers. I mean, that was the prompt, but a lot of people took the same route and, you know, kind of feathers like this, just a regular feather. And this one really stood out for Rogue because using this kind of line of action, uh, which we will talk about more in dynamic posing of cartoon characters, but you can also use it for inanimate objects as well to kind of give them a, a personality and more of a dynamic feel. And you'll see, you know, the way that this comes up and around and then twists in and over top of itself like this and then back up. Just a really, really cool way to, to make this pop, give it a little bit more personality and make it more interesting for the viewer to look at rather than just, you know, a plain leaf that just sits like this. So I think that was a super, super wise design choice and something that I absolutely love seeing. So uh, thanks so much for sharing that one. Uh, Rogue, next up, day 29 lettering. This one's by Charlie or Art by Pokey on Instagram. And it says, I'd curse you, but you're not worth the herbs. So really cute saying, uh, like the, the design here uh, with... The, the mortar and pestle, right? That's what they're called. And the, the kind of watercolor here in the background. I think that's cool. I like the feel of it. Here is where I, I think that a lot of people can use some information and kind of look at this and see. Uh, this is coming up a little bit brighter as I look up on the TV screen. I'm seeing a little bit clearer up there. But uh, as far as when I first saw this, you got to be really careful when you start combining words and putting them over top of illustrations. Uh, for this... I'd curse here and herbs stand out really, really well. You can see those uh, worth the and you, but your, this is where things start to get a little bit off and not, like I said, this is showing up better on my screen on the TV than it is on the iPad, but not is not really readable when you first look at it. And a lot of stuff like this, when you're wanting to do, you know, word-based or lettering stuff and you combine things on top of images, you really want the words to stand out. You don't want the viewer to have to sit there and kind of look at it to figure out what it says. It should automatically be readable. And I think with this, the colors chose is just not as readable as what it should be. So playing around with this, uh, there's a few different options here. I won't be able to do it since this is all a flat image, uh, but you know, choosing different colors here, of course, with this background, it might not work as well with white, uh, but you know, sometimes using white will make it pop off more. Or even if you used this same color here and just added a stroke to the outside and used, you know, a white stroke here or made the words white and used that color stroke there's a lot of different things you can do like i said I, I won't be able to do it here just because they are so close to the colors if i try to change anything it's going to change everything and you'll see it's it's not going to really work so uh but that's one thing definitely take a step back uh if you shrink something down you should see you know going small like this is a good way to to really be able to see you should read those words immediately especially since the words as a whole are bigger than you know this main focus of the illustration you should really be able to read that and then the illustration comes second as you look at the design but just an overall cool idea charlie so thanks so much for sharing that one and last but not least day 30 we're coming to the end charm by roy got this cute cat with the skull we've got the the earring here the uh, bell here the little snaggle tooth here is cute uh, and just a really cool design. Love the colors. One thing here, I already made kind of a, a little arrow to remind myself as I went back through the video to do the review uh, is I like, you know, doing outlines for things. It works for stickers. It helps to separate a design from, you know, a background. This one, I probably would have gone in and made the, the line work here for the outlines a little bit more, uh, kind of perfect as you go around. So here we've got, let's see, like a really kind of light uh, part here between the, the outline and the inking. So not a very wide part, but then when we get down to other parts here, like this part is absolutely huge. You've got a massive amount of outline between the outside of the outline and this outline. So that looks a little bit off. Um, I've talked before about doing stuff with Photoshop super easy because you can just add a stroke around it. Uh, also talked about in one of my previous videos talking about uh, making a duplicate of the flats and then combining everything and just stretching it out. You can do that as well. Uniform doesn't work, and I've talked about that before, but using warp does. 
Um, but same thing here coming down and around, I would have kept that white down here as well. So having the, the same outline, uh, or stroke around, you've got this green down here, which really doesn't make a lot of sense why it goes from the white here to the green here. So I would have either kept the white all the way around or had the green replace the white up here. But yeah, I would just, uh, my, my little suggestion here is just make that more uniform, uh, as far as the stroke going around it, and then just pick one color and stick with that. But just a really cute. Uh, design really cute kind of feel for the the word prompt of charm so that's it guys that's 30 days 30 prompts and 30 artists highlighted in the video all right guys that's it for today's video as always thank you for watching and thanks to everyone that submitted designs for the month of april you guys are awesome and i loved seeing your work if you like today's video too make sure you give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the bell for notifications so you can get alerted when i post new videos so i've been doing these weekly art challenges for over a year now along with the videos that go along with them and that's going to change a little bit going forward with this video so i'm still going to provide weekly word prompts for you guys to draw i'm just not going to be doing the weekly reviews to go along with them instead I'm going to pick four or five submissions every week and share them over on my official Instagram account, which is at BJ Dell. So instead of announcing the word prompts on the channel, I'm still going to be posting those over and keep creating a learn, draw, share art community, which is a Facebook group I started for artists like you. I will link that in the description below. You can find the prompts there. I'm also going to start listing them on my Instagram at BJ Dell, as well as on my Twitter at BJ Dell. So you guys can stay up to date with the new prompts that are going to be released every Wednesday. This is going to give me the chance to focus on doing even more tutorials videos for YouTube and some side projects that I'll announce soon. So if you guys like the daily drawing prompts from April, if one prompt a week isn't enough for you, I do have the Keep Creating 365 Days of Drawing Prompts book available over on Amazon, which I will link in the description as well. Gives you a prompt daily for an entire year in sketchbook form. As for me, I can also be found online, bjdell.com. So until next time, keep creating.